Hey guys, Ryan Earnhardt here from creativesoundlab.tv. Well, today I want to talk to you about uh, parallel processing, but what do you do if you don't have a dry, wet knob? I put out a video uh, last week about uh, some cool stuff on drum bus, and I was kind of thinking about, you know, I should probably cover kind of the old school way of doing dry and wet. You know, where you have a really aggressive compression or a saturation, and you don't exactly want to commit to that 100%, but you want to mix it in a little bit. And a lot of gear and a lot of plugins has like a dry, wet knob. But I want to show you kind of the original old school way of doing it, just so you can do it no matter what plugins you're using. You can always use dry and wet and kind of do a mix. So let's get started. So for this song today, I have um, just my old uh, drum kind of demo pulled up here. And I wanted to really use the faders today and really just show you how this method is, is actually quite a bit better than the method that I showed you in the last video because it actually allows you to use the faders and just have a lot more hands-on control of, of what's going on. So... Um, here in the DAW, uh, I have a couple different, um, you could say, effects uh, channels. These are aux channels. And so what we're doing is basically the same concept as a reverb return. So imagine you're running a, a live sound show and you want to put uh, a reverb on the vocalist. Well, you would, you know... Let's imagine you had like a, a lexicon reverb unit and you would set it up and you'd put it on a stereo return to the little mixer and then you would send various signals to that and it would return into the mixer. And that's essentially parallel processing. I mean, it's 100% wet at the reverb and then we're mixing it in just a little bit to the main mix. So parallel processing is a bit more referred to for things like compression, saturation, where, you know, you don't want to so aggressive, uh, but you don't want to just, you know, be super subtle either. You want to be able to be aggressive on your effects, but then very subtly have that be a part of the mix. And it's just like a reverb in a live sound context. You're just sending something to an effect and it's coming and mixing in with the original, the dry signal. And so what we have here is we have dry drums. I know that's a weird term, but that's just what I'm kind of calling it. So dry drums, the little dash in front of it just indicates that that's like a bus. Just a little bit of my shorthand there. So I have the close mics, the kick, snare top. Uh, this is a high tom, a full 14 on a high tom. And then a R84A by AEA on the floor tom. And so these are my close mics, and they're going to dry drums. Uh, now I do also have my stereo overheads, and these are bust to a dash overhead so that just gives me you know fine control over both mics at once i can eq uh you know both overheads for example but then that goes to dry drums right here okay so everything is going to the dry drums so to speak or the unprocessed drums and here's a little bit about what it sounds like Okay, so easy enough, but here's the thing, is we want to be able to, um, like, let's say this, a Rouser LT here, which is a fantastic plugin. The only problem with this plugin is that the full-size Arouser sounds so good that, you know, it's, it's almost like a crime not to just get the full thing, you know. But this is super nice if you want to just do a quick compression, um, you know, you kind of know what you want. Very, very quick to do this. So I have this just a one-to-one -one so that it doesn't really compress. It just saturates. 
and I'm kind of overdriving it on the input 22 dB, and I'm using it as a saturation. And another thing I could do is uh, do like their uh, their big freak, and that also is is really good at saturation. You know, I, I didn't want to seem like a like a sponsored video um, by just loading in Empirical Lab stuff, but it, it is really, really great for saturation, too. You can just, you know, throttle up this finisher, and this appears and sounds like it's going before the finisher. So you can actually push the low end into the saturation, which makes it so, so nice. So I can just take this and just, you know, give it a little bit of that if I want to just do the low end saturation and do it that way. So, okay, the structure. So we have basically everything going to the dry drums. And then depending on the layers that we want to do, we create an aux track. Okay, this could be called different things depending on your DAW, but it's all the same thing. It's just a track that you have effects on, and you can send to it using your sends. Each of these sends, I can just create one just by, you know, sending it to whatever. Okay, this could be, uh, you know, effect for drums or reverb or whatever. Okay, all of these are just splits of the audio. So we have this fader which the fader, by the way, will take us to the dry drums, which is right here. But then this fader takes us to SAT, which is a aux channel right here. And then this fader here takes us to SMASH, which takes us to this aux channel right here. So it's, it's essentially just another layer of faders, okay? And it's a signal split. It's an easy way to split the signal off and take it over here. And then drums and dry drums also goes to drums so this is our kind of our top level drum bus right here so the close mics go to dry drums and then at the same level of hierarchy we have these two so all these three one two three which is the two wet and the one dry go into the drums there we go we have all of our drums so in the previous video, I had this set up where um, I had this splitter, which is super handy inside of Studio One. And then you can, you know, raise and lower the volume. And that's, that's all very cool. But I wanted to show really how to do it the old school way. Okay. Just like the reverb on a live soundboard, you know. Uh, you want to send something, get the effect, pull it back in. Maybe it's on a pair of faders or it's on like a knob at the top of the board for stereo returns. Whatever it may be, you're just bringing it back in to the main mix. And so these aren't reverbs, but they are effects. These are kind of, you know, splits and alterations of that sound. The key thing here is that I'm going to keep all these the same. Let's see here. So if I want to, you know, I could, uh, you know, take these. I'll just kind of show you how it's done. So if I want to uh, send it to the saturation, which eh, that's actually not the right one there. Oh, no, it is. Okay, cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check the level. And so let's say, eh, let's do whatever. Doesn't even matter. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy it over. Okay. And depending on your DAW, it'll be done in a little bit different ways. But I'm just copying it over so that everything is the same. Okay. And this is post fader. So all that means is that our moves are going to be um, seen by the saturation, depending on what we do here. And that's actually that's actually kind of important because let's say that we decide that we don't want any of the bottom mic, we take the fader all the way down. You know, we want to make sure that that bottom mic isn't going into our saturation necessarily. So it's kind of nice to be able to control that. 
it keeps up with the same mix. The same mix that's going into our dry drums, our untreated drums, is going to the saturation, and it's going to that smash uh, aux auxiliary track as well. So I set this as post fader, okay? So again, using our live sound example, like the post and pre fader, it could be confusing, but you just think of it as the application. So post fader, it makes sense for something like a reverb, you know? Um, if you turn down the background vocals, then you're not gonna have a bunch of reverb, you know, going on with all the background vocals. It'll be turned down as well in the effects. But let's say you're doing like a stage monitor. Well, you don't want your live sound adjustments being heard by the in-ears on stage. You want it to actually be pre-fader what you're sending them so that anything isn't seen by their mix. It's all, you know, your faders are after that. So the, the send is pre-fader, okay? It's before the fader. It's in its kind of pure form. Here we're doing post-fader so that all of our adjustments, no matter what we do, is going here. So it's the same mix. Now we could alter the mix if we want. Say we know that the kick is just too much. So let's just take this down a little bit, right? And maybe the floor tom is just too much too. It's distorting too much. So we can actually trim it down, but it'll still be the same mix with just these adjustments here, okay? So if I do say, this mix, whatever that may be, it'll still give us that feel plus the trim of whatever it may be here, negative 6.5, you know, versus negative 5, okay? So it's, you know, it's we're kind of using this to our advantage here, and we're able to kind of custom tailor what's going on in the saturation if, you know, say the low end was too much in that. So... Let's go, you know what, let's just check, check out the arouser first, the LT, and man, just make sure I'm on the right one here. Saturation, okay. And let's, let's check it out and see what it sounds like. And just to kind of go with that other idea, let's see what happens over here. Cool. So with one plugin, we can do distortion and the tone, which is uh, which is pretty nice. I want to just scoop out some of these mids here, just because we're trying to kind of keep the stuff that we want and get rid of the other stuff. We'll just run with that and then we'll kind of mix in the uh, original dry. So we have a lot of control because now it, it's not that we have to click inside of a plugin or something. And I know that there's other stuff like um, I saw somebody using like a Waves plugin manager where you can just load in a bunch of stuff, uh, I guess, provided that you are only using Waves plugins to do this. But it's just basically a rack system where you can load them in and it gives you that wet and dry. And that's really cool. I'm sure there's other ways to do this. But I'm just showing you kind of the old school way because no matter what you do, 
you know, you always have a, a set of auxiliary tracks. Sometimes you have a control surface, and now you have just this extreme control that you have. Okay, pretty cool. So now moving uh, kind of onward here, let's go to the compression. And so kind of sticking with what we had before um, from the previous video, we just literally just took this and moved it right over. And so now it's, uh, you know, sitting, uh, uh, kind of getting its sound directly from the close mics on kick, snare, uh, toms, overheads, etc. So the only difference between, you know, kind of having this method versus the one that we're talking about is because this method, it kind of sums everything together here. And so there's actually some saturation flavoring that's going into this. And it, so it's kind of summing twice. And here we're really just kind of summing once. So none of this saturation craziness is going into our smash compressor, for example. So that's one difference. And if we want to change it, I'm sure we could just set up a send and actually send this uh, into uh, the smash auxiliary channel. And so again, like you just kind of layer in the sounds. Okay, so let's check out uh, this smash compressor here. Yeah, so really cool. And kind of an advanced tip, uh, kind of a, a bonus round, I guess, is uh, you can actually take, um, well, for one, the trim is really useful. So here in Studio One, it gives you a trim right on the top, but you know you can e just very easily trim down everything um, in case you want to ram it, you know, whatever, ram the plugins even harder. You don't have to go through and like trim them down or, you know, shift click and you know do them all you can just do it right here but here's here's something that's, that's really cool and i'm kind of giving away a, a a cool video idea that i'm going to cover is this uh polarity flip okay some people call it the phase flip but it's just flipping the polarity so instead of the wave going up and then down whereas the speakers would push out and then go back in instead the wave goes down and then up Okay, and so it basically is going to cancel out certain things that line up. So if you do the addition of positive five and negative five, what do you get? You get zero. It cancels out. So if you have a wave that goes up to positive five, random number, then negative five, you get zero. The trick is that the compressor is changing it and it's going all over the place. So there's going to be weird moments where it cancels out and weird moments where it doesn't. And this is pretty cool. This, this is, um, yeah, this, this is some advanced stuff. Uh, so yeah, just check this out.
So if I had to guess how like the SPL transient designer works, I bet you it's something to do with that because there's been a lot of cool stuff I've been messing around with on flipping the polarity, changing something, adding it back together, and it does some really cool next level stuff. I mean, not just taking compression to shape your transients, but actual just polarity flips and then re-addition and, and basically, uh, you know, causing it to cancel out certain parts of the sound. So again, the compressor is making those uh, moments of sustain, for example, louder. And if those moments of sustain match up with the level of the dry drum, then at that moment, it'll cancel out. So it's going to sound like the drums are drier and they don't have any room sound at that point. But if the attack of the drum lines up, then it'll cancel out that attack, okay? So pretty cool stuff. Uh, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but that's the kind of stuff I'm playing around with. Uh, we've talked a little bit about this with um, uh, like hearing one dB of compression. I put a video out about, you know, that you can hear one dB of compression. And, and uh, you know, you can go check that as, out as well. That is uh, kind of the same concept, okay? We're flipping the polarity, and then we're able to hear just the tiniest amount of compression because it'll cancel out at those little tiny, you know, moments. You can really actually hear it. Uh, so that's a cool video if you want to uh, learn something new and different way of hearing compression, even just 1 dB over a complete stereo bus. Okay, well, I'm going to be hanging out some more and goofing off. But, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Be hanging out. Comments below.